Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're recording live at Rusty's Food and Barbecue. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. As you can see with me today, I've got Rusty Dellett here from Rusty's Bar and Barbecue and we are having a great time uh, here in the on, on the Sunshine Coast. I just realised I did misspeak the name again, I'm sorry. You did, yes. It's Rusty's like food, food and, and Barbecue. barbecue. <laughs> My apologies. And so mm -hmm. tonight we're going to get right into that. Now just a couple of, of quick announcements for you. Um, this show, at, as you can see, we are now well and truly into video format and we're travelling around the country going to different venues. And so we're now um, throwing the opportunity open to other barbecue businesses out there who want to get their message in front of uh, some barbecue mad fans. So if you're interested in getting some video advertising into the podcast, shoot me an email, ben at smokinghotconfessions.com, and we'll get you sorted out. Now, the second announcement is this weekend, we're at the Sunny Coast Barbecue Festival. So big shout out to Julian for putting on the first Queensland comp since COVID. Go, Julian. Uh, sorry, first ABA comp in Queensland since COVID. Sorry, Dennis did do one Up at Harvey two, Bay. Week, two weekends yes. ago in Harvey Bay. Apologies, Dennis. First ABA one. And so big shout out to him for that. And hopefully Queensland can win all the prizes this year because we'll be the only ones that can get three, three comps in. Totally, we're the only ones here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which would be awesome. So in, in just a minute, we're going to get right into, uh, into Rusty's story. And so we will be right back. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Hey, Rusty, thank you for joining me in, in the confessional tonight. Or actually, I should say, I'm joining you in your in your barbecue joint. How are you, man? Mate, I'm really well. Welcome to Rusty's Food and Barbecue. It is a ripper to be here. Now, service has just cleaned out, so we have just uh, j just finished for the evening. Yeah, like literally seconds ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can actually hear them at, as they were leaving during the intro there. <laughs> um, so, it, mate, it was really busy tonight. Yeah, look, it was a small one, to be honest. Um, I think we had 76 tonight. Um Good numbers, good numbers. Yeah, it's nice to see things building. Like particularly, we've obviously got a COVID number that we need to uh, to adhere to. But um, hopefully, when that breaks and the sun's shining and the, the warm weather rolls in, and we can use the balcony, yeah, look, 100, 100, 100, 120. Mate, I've seen your photos of the views. If you can get tables out there and get people eating barbecue out there, man, you are, you have got it made. Barbecue with a view, Ben. Barbecue yeah, yeah, with a view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's let's uh, let's start at the start because I know you've got a long history with uh, in the food industry and with yep. barbecue. So before we get into where we are now, let's go back to the start. Where, where did it all kick off for you? Uh, with food, essentially. So, yeah, yeah. Um, look, basically, uh, from as soon as I left school after year twelve, I went and did uh, an apprenticeship. Um, and as soon as I'd finished my apprenticeship down in Sydney, um, I literally got out of the trade because it didn't pay. <laughs> so uh, going from a, from a fourth year apprentice to a uh, to a qualified chef really didn't make a great deal of difference to the pay scale. Oh, really? Not hugely back in those days. Um, and I'd also been working bar uh, in between and working uh, bar paid twice as much as what it did to be uh, an apprentice chef. So really? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. To, to be an apprentice. Yeah, I'd, I can understand that. Yeah, and yeah. to be a qualified chef. So different levels where, you know, if you work with poker machines and Kino and all that sort of stuff, then your pay level goes up as opposed to just using a knife and cutting lettuce across the floor. So, <laughs> it, uh, so for me, I sort of uh, very lightly used as a chef, I suppose, you want to put it that way, um, and then spent a lot of time in bars and in clubs particularly. Um, and ended up running a couple of clubs in Sydney um, before uh, pretty much burning out um, towards that 30 mark, I suppose. Okay. Um, 30 years of age, 30 years of yeah, age, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it was incredibly gruelling and, and really hard. And uh, when we had our, our son, so uh, he's just now 15 and a half, nearly 16, so... Um, we decided that it was time for uh, a change and uh, wanting to get out of what uh, the hustle and bustle of Sydney and the clubs were and um, literally um, packed up and we bought a cafe um, down in Caloundra here. So Nice. Yeah. Quite the sea change. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, went back to cooking, and um, which was almost 
Uh, my third chef job was buying my own cafe, so it was a bit crazy when you sort of think of it that way. <laughs> so, um, and we, we had that for two years, um, and we sold it. Um, so going well back in time now, like just before the GFC hit. Uh, more good luck than good management, but you take what you could. And hey, can't can't complain. Yeah, and so um, it still was always a passion to get back in and do something at a restaurant scale, as opposed to just a mum and pop style cafe where both myself and my wife worked, and um, you work crazy hours again, but you're working for yourself, so you sort of you, you, you cope Feels with that. Feels a lot better. Absolutely. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your hours are still your own, even if you're keeping them to the sign on the door. So yeah. <laughs> Um, and then from there, once we'd sold that, um, I did a couple of years with one of the local surf clubs, um, just uh, in and out, in and out with the operations with uh, with Dickie Beach Surf Club, and then um, literally landed a job in the wine industry. And uh, with uh, back then, which was Cumulus Wines, was out of Orange, um, and spent six and a half years with them, and. Uh, more time as a rep with a food service company, and then more time again with another uh, with another wine company before um, uh, coming to rest at Rusty's Food and Barbecue as a pop up. Yep. Which was yep. literally uh, it popped up on my Facebook feed about 12 months ago today. So. Oh right! I oh, see. So you've you've actually been here for 12 months. No, 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 no. So as a pop up. So oh, okay. As gotcha. a pop up, gotcha. we were yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the breweries and, and events and that sort of stuff and some yep. private catering and, um, yeah, so that was literally 12 months ago. And then um, how do we get here, I suppose, is a fairly good question. And yeah. um, once COVID came in, uh, it's probably the backstory with that is we were in Melbourne. We actually flew down uh, the Team Charcoal Project Barbecue um, to go and compete in meat stock in Melbourne and uh, we were five or six minutes from the gate when uh, Jay uh, cancelled the event. So, mm. um, looking which, at which was definitely the right choice. When I not, was going to uh, say, looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, totally everyone was 100% in support of, yep. uh, of what Jay's move was there and yeah, there was always that you could have gone ahead but did you want to be that event and um, yeah, discretion. No one wants to be that guy. <laughs> no, and I think discretion being a better part of Valor, Jay did make absolutely yeah. the right choice and, um, yeah, my, I doth my hat to him for yeah, that. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it would not have been any uh, any more heartbreaking for anybody more than Jay himself, so... Yeah, yeah. look, you know, yeah, a couple of thousand dollars worth of airfares and all that sort of stuff is pretty minor compared to... Uh, the bills that he'd have been left with yeah. at the end of that. So yeah, yeah, but still, uh, but still pretty devastating nonetheless. To, oh, totally. To, to go down there and, uh, and and not be able to. Yeah, but to you do know that. what? Look, there's still a chance to catch up with all the barbecue family down there and uh, guys that we'd known and and met along the line and um, probably because we went down and did Port Mac in 2018, the last Port Mac um, that we yeah met all those guys and then. Um, was able just to catch up and yeah, like literally, it's, it's like going and it was almost like it was yesterday. Now, the the way that I saw it on the social medias, it looked like the party just moved from the showgrounds to Q Club. I'd, I'd imagine that would have been a pretty wild night. Yeah, look, it was. <laughs> it was. What happens on tour stays on tour. Oh, okay, but, fair enough. Yeah, um, yeah look, uh, Andrew obviously around runs a pretty tight ship down there and. Um, again, you know, you can see why he's uh, the premium of what he does and he does it incredibly well and uh, that place was just, yeah, he was rocking. Yeah. yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Now, you're, um, you, you, you started out life in barbecue as a bit of a Weber man, I understand. Now, over my shoulder here behind me, you've got a very rare blue uh, go anywhere. Yeah. And as we're sitting here recording, I've just looked up past the camera and you've actually <laughs> got a sneaky little red Smoky Joe sitting up on a... Uh, what is that? Like a shelf attached to a yeah? Look, that's a actually or something. Um, it's actually the shelf for the. Uh, they have a projector. It goes on a projector oh, screen. Oh right, okay. Uh, it literally sits in the cupboard until someone needs it. So I decided that I just claim that space in between. Much better use for I it. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. tell us about Weber's. Was that your first introduction to barbecue? Um, yeah, like literally, you know, outside of the the old, you know, four bricks and a hot plate that we all sort of grew up with as Australian barbecue, I suppose. Um, Love of wanting to get into doing low and slow, I think, always starts with most people along the lines with Weber's. Um, and for mine, um, 
I bought one, I learned how to use it, then I bought two, I bought three, and yeah, look, the story went till it was about, you know, somewhere between 40 and 50, I think, and then... Your, um, your wife's actually in the background now, and I can see her counting off on her fingers on her uh, hand behind us, so... <laughs> you know, when we... We moved house about uh, two and a half years ago, and uh, the real estate agent didn't think that the back deck could hold 45 Webers was a great <laughs> selling point. So he made me move them all into storage. And after I had to move them all, I thought, this is silly. <laughs> you can only use one at a time. And look, slowly whittled through my uh, my collection. And um, But yeah, look, I spent some time uh, on the, the admin team, I suppose, of the Weber Kettle Club, um, which was probably where most people came to know me within barbecue, um, which was brilliant. Golly and Joel, Evan... Um, Sean Bradley, all those guys, just brilliant. They so, are characters, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and the, the scene's better for those guys never having changed from where they started. Yeah. Uh, and they've got the, the trophies to prove it, you know. They, they You can win on Weber Kettles oh, they, too. they don't muck around, those guys. No, so they, they don't. Well, they do, but they don't, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they load both barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you've got uh, 45 Webers, you've, you've whittled them down. Now, was this before or after the big uh, peak in, in used Weber prices about two years ago? Um, so I'm probably part of the instigator of it, unfortunately. But, <laughs> um, like, literally, um, when it came time to move them on, um, I was very reasonable within my pricing. Um, but I also had a goal in mind because I was buying a Jambo. So I was going to get to the Jambo, yeah, yeah. So we moved on uh, probably. And, and let's, let's sort of back it up a little bit. Like most of my collection wasn't just a red, blue, a green. You know, there was a lot of rarer stuff there, a lot of older stuff. Um, there was a lot of accessories and that sort of gear. So when I was moving them on, um, there was always uh, some collectability involved in it. It wasn't just yep. trying to get the most dollars you could because you bought a red kettle for 20 bucks and you can now sell it for 100 yeah, sort of yeah, thing. So yeah, yeah. Um, some of my stuff sold for, you know, five or $600 back in those days. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be like probably two grand now. I actually saw, I actually logged into Facebook Marketplace the other day and there was a, uh, it was... I, I, I want to say it was just like a, just a simple red Weber kettle mm. and someone had put like two grand on it. Yeah. Uh, probably because his, wife, probably cause his <laughs> wife told him to sell it and he said, look, I've put it on Marketplace, oh, okay? Oh, and then he goes, I can't, I can't, look, I can't. No, not even a nibble, honey. <laughs> <laughs> not a good strategy, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that'll work for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure it will. No, it was probably too, we're probably in too public a space now. <laughs> we've just put it out there now. Yeah. yeah. So did the did the sale of all those Webers did that did that cover the cost of the Jambo? Yeah, it did. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, yes, it did. Um, uh, which was, you know, again, uh, the Jambo went probably below value um, for what it would have come in at, and the work that had been put into it by Brett from uh, Sticky Fingers with a card underneath and everything. Um, yeah, look, it was just a beautiful barbecue and. Um, I still wished I hadn't sold it, but um, that's a, that's another story, isn't it? Look, it's gone we'll, to a we'll, very, very we'll, good. We home. will get to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how did that Jambo come to be in Australia? Because they are super rare. Yeah. So I think when I had mine, uh, there was three others or two others in Australia. So one was in the American Embassy, and one was uh, with a fella in Sydney. In the so, American yeah. Embassy was yeah, where yeah, the other Danny one was. Yeah. Wow. So, and mine uh, was literally uh, the only one in the wild, if you like, that was uh, <laughs> moving around and actually being seen and, uh, and cooked on on a regular basis. And um, so Jesse from Eureka Smoke mm -hmm. originally bought that in and then went a different direction. Um, I think he went with charcoal cabinets or something along those I, lines. I think he had um, some of the the good one. I think it's called. Yeah. Is it is it those the, little, the Chris Marks cabinets that? Yeah, those um, little cabinets that fit uh, in the back of your car. Bully Barbecue loves them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he sold that to to Brett um, from Sticky Fingers and uh, in Brisbane. So they trailered it up from uh, Melbourne to Brisbane, and then Brett had it for a couple of years, I think. Um, and had it on the market for a long time and just nobody, whether... Um, was that just because they didn't know what it was? I think, I mean, I think that's possibly that. And yeah, the, yeah. the fact that it was on the cart, um, probably oh, most as people... as opposed to a trailer-mounted job, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just probably didn't quite understand, you know, the uh, 
<laughs> the fact, it, and it does get tiring, pushing it on and off and having it winched oh. up and down on trailer yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But um, we played with the suspension on that, and we put it. It already had the airbags under it, but we put it all onto individual controls so you could pump the back and the front up at the oh. time. And <laughs> please tell me you bounced it like yeah, a, yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we popped the rear airbag and um, decided we weren't going to do that anymore. And that was the end of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, what, a $1,500 lesson or something? Um, no, it wasn't too bad. It was actually, it didn't end up being the airbag. It was just a fitting. Oh, right. So it, it had a plastic fitting on top and it literally just exploded off. <laughs> um, we replaced it with a stainless one, but we thought, <laughs> and then I blew a couple of the, uh, couple of compressors and thought, you know what, this is just silly. Just pump it up and get it off the trailer and put it back down again. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, yeah. I, I think I saw you at, at one competition where you just burnt through one of the lines. Yeah, there, there yeah. was enough. Yeah, there was another issue with we, we put a little Weber go anywhere uh, on the front of it uh, where it used to have the battery box, um, and every time we used it, we just used to put a little heat sink underneath. And on that occasion, we forgot the heat sink, <laughs> and obviously heat got into the course, into yeah, the yeah. airline. Airline just sort of melted, and yeah, she was grounded. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. I, I saw it belly on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, and we had to uh, drag and push. Um, as, as best we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you did say that that you've rehomed it. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of my teammates, um, probably someone uh, that a lot of people who uh, part of your podcast or have been part of would know, Rod uh, Ribney Harvey. Um, yeah, great guy. Really wanted it. Um, I needed something on a trailer, and to be honest with you, I really didn't want to sell it, but. Um, knowing where it was going and how much it was going to be loved and the fact that he'd used it so many times, you know, it was just, you know, it's like just handing it off to a family member, which Rod essentially is for us anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, we spend a lot of time, you know, on the phone and talking anyway, so um, I know where it is just about at all times. So <laughs> yeah. It's not so bad. I can say hi. So you, so you ring, uh, ring Ribney up me like, yeah, can I listen to this? Is she, is she thinking about me? Yeah, okay, can I listen to the crackle of the firebox, please? <laughs> so, so once you moved that uh, moved that jambo on, what did you get into after that? Um, so, literally, um, I bought uh, the beard and the barbecues. Uh, Conchita. Conchita, yeah. Oh, right. The twenty-four inch, um, yeah, trailer smoker. Yep. Um, That's yeah. a radar hill, isn't it? Yeah, radar hill. Yes. Been around for, yeah, since 2016, so it was one of the original ones that came out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's on a pretty small trailer, but um, toes beautifully, cooks beautifully, got the provenance in it. You know that if you, you, you bugger up a cook, it's just definitely you, because it's, no, it's, 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 it's not the barbecue. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to see some of the briskets that you were um, cooking out there before. Oh, sorry, that you were slicing yes. up here, um, that you had cooked on Conchita, and, uh, man, they looked banging. Yeah, look, just, again, look, the, once you, radars are funny, like, um, there's three ways you can cook on it, I reckon. Okay. One is flat out, so exhaust open, full, f- full uh, inlets open, and just let it raw. It'll chew through wood, but it gets a nice clean burn, but it just doesn't really get hot. It'll hit mm. to about 250 degrees, and it just sort of stops there. You close her up a little bit, and the temperature comes up on the fire. Before you close the firebox up a little bit, and the temperature comes up. Um, you use smaller splits, and then uh, it just burns. I think even cleaner, but you can get it up like, consistently to sit up around that 300 mark. Oh, nice. uh, Which is which is where I like to cook because that's what the Jambo used to like to cook at. It was, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a 300, 325 degree cooker, and so getting this back up to 300 for me, um, just to. I just like the airflow that way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah, maybe I'm inventing it. I don't know. I'm very sure it's been already done. But it's just the way that I like to cook it, that 300 sure. mark. Um, I can knock briskets out in, you know, six hours. And I was about to say that's going to make a huge difference when you are cooking in bulk numbers like you are for the for the barbecue joint here. Like, you you want to be banging out those six-hour briskets. You don't want to be doing 12- and 14-hour briskets. Yeah, so. look, you can, you can push... You can push it up to about 400 and cook in about four, four and a half hours, but <laughs> you've got to be real careful. So hour and a half and then wrap them for the other two and a half hours and 
yeah, just make sure there's plenty of liquid in there. You so, can do it, but you generally end up with crumbly edges. Okay. Yeah. Um, for catering, not so bad. For competition, not so good. So no, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, you are. Uh, the, the four-hour cook, so I'm, I'm assuming then that you've really got to be on the ball, so there's like a zero beer limit on the uh, on, on the four-hour cooks? Uh, yeah, uh, just, yeah, well, one or two anyway, but um, <laughs> it's, it's literally, yeah, you're watching it like a hawk and the temperature, you know, you, you need to move them around in the pit a little bit. Um, but, yeah, once they're up, like just top shelf, um, sits roughly 50 degrees higher than the bottom shelf, so... Um, yeah, you stick them on the top shelf. The little briskets that we're talking, you know, four and a half kilo briskets. So, yeah, yeah. Um, as long as there's plenty of fat in there, they don't dry out. They, they go okay. Um, can you do it? Yes. Should you do it? No. Why not? But <laughs> is it the best product? No, I don't think it is, personally. So. Well, it tasted pretty damn good to me this yeah, afternoon. Those, so. ones, those ones were... Uh, they went on at 9 o'clock this morning and came off at uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon. So they had a... Oh, OK. Well, oh, that was a good seven hours then. Yeah, so. They, they, yeah so the wind whistles up here past the golf course. Um, we're actually not that far from the sea, so... Get the ocean um, breezes coming yeah, straight up the hill. Sort yeah. Of, yeah, it gets caught between the ocean, uh, between the, the rock, if you want to call it that, Mount yeah. Coulomb, um, and the clubhouse, and it just whistles straight up. And um, so you just got to have everything closed off on one side and open on the other and... Um, yeah, look, it just starts to snuff it out a little bit, so you just got to be careful. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All right, so now let's get into um, the barbecue joint here itself. Now, before we do continue, I meant to give this to you at, at the start of the episode. Uh-huh. I ran into um, James, the barbecue judge. Ah, James Park. Uh, J- James Park, yep. Yeah. Um, about four or five episodes ago, he was on the show. Go back, check that out. Australia's number one barbecue judge. He gave me a gift that he wants me to give you. Mm. So I'm, I'm just going to show everybody else first. Mm. Mm. And there you this have is it. interesting. That is from James Park. Aha. Uh-huh. Because he knows that you love the, uh, the, the the mountain goat beer. Apparently that is a 10-year-old coaster. And if you look at it, there's no marks on it. There's no nothing. Fair dinkum. Yeah, right. That's excellent. We'll sit it up there somewhere in amongst our eclectic sort of little You, you do have quite that. the collection up there. It's, pretty, it's cool. Yeah, look, anyone can do sensible and um, I, don't, I don't do boring very well, so... Um, yeah, people go, why well, you got 10 pins up there? It's like, why not? <laughs> yeah. Why do we have to not? Do you know what I mean? So because every time we slice that brisket, we love to yell, stroke! <laughs> exactly. Why not? Yeah, that's yeah. Good, maybe that's the thing I should do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll give it a shot. So we, you started mentioning before that, um, that Rusty's Food and Barbecue started as a pop-up. Yes. Can you give us a bit of a story about how that sort of came together? Yeah, so, um, look, literally, once we had... Can cheat. Oh, I actually started when I had the jambo, funny enough. But, um, and I, I used to, when I was in the wine industry, um, I was also supplementing part of my income uh, by doing some private catering and all that sort of stuff with um, uh, Jared and Lauren from Beauty and the Beard Eats and Events. Okay, yep. Uh, located up in Gympie. Um, and they used to uh, give me about 50% of their, or they used to give me all their overflow. So like nice. a, cu- a couple of uh, things once, a couple of events a month sort of thing. So, um, and it just started getting to a point where I started to, you know, you do the sums and you go, well, what do I have to do? I've already got 50% of my income coming in from that side. So what do I have to do to make sure that if I'm going to leave what was essentially a good job, Yeah. yeah. Um, how am I going to get all that money recouped and whatever? So... I hear that. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so we sat down, I sat down with my wife, we did the sums, and she said, well, if you want to do it, go and do it. Like, um, she'd only just gone back to work full time at that stage, um, which also softened the blow of everything going on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like literally, um, it was a little bit serendipitous, just that um, when she started work, this opportunity opened up. Um, I was sick of travelling because I'd travel all the way up to Rockhampton, out to Emerald, out to Longreach and sort of come back and just do this great big giant triangle which was, you know, uh, which would take me away from home 
roughly about a quarter of the year. So yeah, yeah. Um, with yeah. a young family, it just wasn't really tenable. And uh, as my kids were starting to get older and they need a little bit more help with the homework and that sort of stuff and you're away, yep. you can't do that. So, um, yeah, it was like literally a lifestyle choice. Um, and, yeah, look, never look back, to be honest with you. So, yeah, look, this – and, you know, so the pop-ups and we used to do breweries, obviously, and, and still did private catering. And, um, yeah, look, literally until COVID came along and then we – Yeah, let's get into that. Then we sort of sat down and um, – because the breweries weren't taking uh, food trucks. Mm. Um, there were some that were still taking some. Um, but we were pretty much last in with most of uh, those people, so we were obviously first out at the yeah. same time. So yeah, yeah. Um, we, then you know, obviously homeschooling came along, um, which wasn't was, that fun. Oh yeah, it was <laughs> tops, wasn't it? Hey, tops. Um, yeah, five weeks of you know, I got three kids. Only only five weeks. Was it five weeks? I don't know. My, seven, my, eight. My, my yeah. kid was home for twelve. Well, yeah, my kids finished up two weeks before the end of term, so... Yeah, same. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there yeah. wasn't that same inkling that you had to do the schoolwork at that time. Yep. But when they came back, it was like five weeks of just pressure. And I got three kids in two different schools. So we had um, three kids in three age groups. And, three, <laughs> and, and we had... I had to deal with 13 <laughs> teachers. Oh, 13? Oh, because... Oh, two so, of them, so two, they're two in high them school. In, they're yeah, high so school one's waste. in year seven, one's in year ten, and one's in year four. So Right. So, yeah, and it was just no cross... Like, you, you couldn't even get a crossover with one teacher in high school, seriously? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. crazy. Anyway, we got through it. Yep, yep. Now, when it came to math, was it like, if I get one brisket... And when I cook it, I've got a 33% weight loss. How much brisket do I have left to serve? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Was yeah. that how you got through it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, how many, how many parts can you break a chicken down to? <laughs> yeah. and, it, and if I was to charge $2 for a breast and $3 for a wing, which, how would we come out of Look, I, I, I've got to tell you, there's a serious case for some real-world application of um, education like in exactly that sort it's, of thing, like, like teaching entrepreneurial skills as well as just you know the the traditional it's all mass um, at the end of the day arithmetic yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Where when you start talking margins and waste and and loss you know of uh of protein due to the cooking process all that sort of stuff yeah yeah you know it's very hard when uh you start talking to people and you go oh look brisket comes out it costs you about 60 bucks a kilo and they're like what does it cost 60 oh, i'm gonna go buy it for 14 it's like go and buy it for 14 and cook it yeah. <laughs> because you start off with six kilos you end up with four kilos You've got a load of iron bark. You've stood there for seven hours. You know, the, the labour cost involved with it. I mean, literally, you don't hover over it, but, you know, you're still part of the process the whole way along. So oh, yeah, yeah. It's just what it is. So, yeah, to look rough figures, it's $60 a kilo. Yeah, yeah. And those are valuable lessons for those kids to learn, particularly because they're high school aged. And, you know, you, you're going to be able to start bringing them in here into the shop. And, oh, you mentioned that you had about a 14-year-old son. Was that him in, uh, in here working 15, tonight? 15, yeah. 15. Yeah, so he comes and works two days a week. That's so good. Uh, with us. And then I've got uh, Mitchell who works uh, for me four days a week, uh, who has been part of, uh, how do I put it, uh, he used to be one of my customers in, in from when I was a rep uh, and literally just fell right at the right time to scoop him up and <laughs> give him some work. So... Um, and then the young lass that we had here today, Lucy, um, used to be our next door neighbour. So, oh right. Yeah. So, so it's uh, a real close knit sort of community yeah, working well, in, here. In, the, in, in Collins, part of Charcoal Project Barbecue, and that's her father. So, oh right. So yeah, ah. like it really is this yeah, real barbecue wow. fa family feel. So yeah, yeah. We've all known each other for ten years. So it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool that during this time when everyone is having so much trouble with COVID that you're able to support all those, all those young people and, and, and give them some work during this tough time too. So that's, that's an added bonus uh, as well. It, yeah, it totally is. And, you know, look, we've got uh, bigger plans still afoot here too. So um, there's going to be more work for those guys if they want it, if they can. So uh, if they can fit it in with their schooling schedules, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so COVID came along, basically shut down the, the pop-up. Yep. How did you hear about this place? Um, literally, they called for food trucks um, because they... Uh, the last caterer uh, just didn't work out. 
Mm. I suppose is the best way of putting it. Um, <laughs> the so, most diplomatic way of putting yeah, it. <laughs> look, it's nothing to do with me. I wasn't here at that stage. So, um, it was, he obviously it was like that here. when I came here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they called for food trucks to come and do Friday nights and um, without people knowing this place, but it is upstairs and downstairs and, um, look, there's 15, I can tell you, there's 15 steps everywhere around here. So, <laughs> so I... Uh, because they called for food trucks, I came and I said, it just won't work at this place. And they said, beg your pardon? It's like, it won't work. Like, you got your, your demographic and everything, um, they're just not going to travel 15 stairs down to walk out to a tent to go and get food to then come up and then realise that they'd forgotten serviettes to go back down. It just, it, yeah. it just, didn't, it just didn't seem logical to me. Mm. And, if they had um, outdoor seating, then that would be another... Yeah, correct. Yeah, I'd, I'd, another possibility it, yeah. it, that'd work. Yeah, but with a bar and everything up here, then they'd have to come upstairs to get. Still so, got the same problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's sort yeah. of. It was sort of. Um, for me, it didn't just. It just didn't seem right. And knowing clubs as I knew clubs, um, you really need to have that service uh, offered for a bistro uh, or a food options um, five or six days a week. Like, mm. Otherwise. You just don't get any traction. So uh, we came here and we had a chat with uh, the, the management here and um, they were really keen with uh, what we put forward as a, a bit of a very quick business plan. Um, and then from that meeting to opening, we were like literally six weeks. It was like bam, bam, That's bam. That's so fast. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh, are you doing anything? It's like, um, well, no, yeah, no, I could, yeah, I could do it in six weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, like, can I do it in six weeks? It's like, well, you have to. You've just signed. A, just signed. That's what all the billionaire entrepreneurs say. You say yes to everything, and then you work out how you're going to do it later. Yeah. So we like literally put together a menu, which most of it was already done because we had uh, the pop-up menu. I was going to say that. So you you already had all like all your branding worked out. You had your menu worked out. You yeah. already, you already knew your cookers and how they worked and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So. Look, and more more to the uh, to the kudos of the club than anything else is is that I said what I wanted to do if I was going to come on here is I wanted to bring my brand. Yep. And I wanted to be co-branded with the club, as yep. in uh, I didn't want to come here and run the Mountain View Cafe as Rusty's Food and Barbecue. I wanted to come here and be Rusty's Food and Barbecue yep. Yep. Um, and give give myself a solid base, but give them someone that they could call on all the time, mm. you know, so... Well, it's a, it's a successful formula. We've already seen it work with uh, Grey... Uh, Big Red down in uh, Lismore with his Stockpot Kitchen. Yeah. He, he started in a club as well and now he's got his own yeah. standalone joint as well. So. Yeah, look, and, you know, you can't rely on the members to give you your income, but they certainly can be the cream on the cake. Yeah. Uh, and so we literally went out there, we got our menu done, we put everything together, we stocked the kitchen, we flicked the lights on, and then we went, righto, now we need to go and find some people. Yeah. So um, we, yeah, look, literally, like, you always push, you know. you just got to start working those social media channels and pushing it and seeing, you know. And I got very fortunate that uh, through my career or my life in barbecue and four years of competing, I've met an enormous amount of people um, and uh, luckily they seem to like me, so uh, that's a bonus. And <laughs> so they, they came and supported us. And so, you know, I can't, I, I won't run through them all, but um, it's just been enormous amount. And all, most of them are North Brisbane sort of based up to, you know, a Harvey Bay. So all sort of around this, you know, more local area, if you like. But yeah, unbelievable. Been blown away by the support. So would you put that down to social media, the, the fact that you're able to draw so many people in? Um, from Look, I think that's probably more on my own social media that because we're all still friends along, you know, that, that, that line that they were happy to come in and support us. But So that was all organic social media marketing? Yeah, then? pretty much. But then, wow. we, but then letting people know that we were no longer a pop-up yeah, uh, yep. entity, and we work here in bricks and mortar. Yep. Um, that was the social media side where we just started putting our hand up and um, send, you know, sending people who I knew uh, that used to come to those pop ups and uh, worked with some of the food bloggers up here and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, we've been very fortunate that you know, um, again, hard work pays off. I suppose I call it fortunate, but. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss, but we seem to have hit the mark so far. Mate, I tell you what, you've got a bag of uh, clean heat briquettes over there behind us and uh, Abel 
says all the time. He says, mate, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Yeah. So, and that, that is so true. And, you know, um, I was speaking with Abel uh, literally three weeks ago. And, yeah, poor bloke over in lockdown in He's stuck in there, Botswana, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, what we try to do within here is, is try and support some, some people and some brands that um, have been good to us over, over our time and uh, be able to give people, uh, I suppose, here on the Sunshine Coast particularly, um, the opportunity to purchase things that they can't find in other spaces so you know even when you you know you come and you talk about our briskets um they're rubbed in butcher's axe rubs you know like we buy those yeah yeah and that's a premium product to mm. go on a brisket for catering but that's the quality that that we put out there yeah, I, yeah. sort of i sort of said to you earlier when we came in here that what we wanted to do was to set the bar up here um and then see if we could push it higher yeah, or if yeah. that was where our ceiling was. And yeah. um, so far, we've, you know, we're grabbing millimetres at a time. Yep. But yep. that's, um, yeah, like you got to set your standards high and your bars yeah, yeah. high. And, yeah. um, you know, if you can fill a room full of people to eat barbecue that have never eaten barbecue before and they come back week after week, you've got to be doing something Straight right. Straight up win, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. Alrighty, Rusty. So for segment three, uh, it's our lesson segment where we get to share some of your wisdom with the viewers and the listeners. Hmm? And uh, I, I just saw that little eye roll there. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we only just quickly discussed this. So, yeah. um, so we're going to get into um, into basically how to recognise opportunities. Because one yep. thing that's sort of stuck out through the conversation that we've had so far is that you have a bit of a knack for recognising when there's an opportunity in front of you and then really grabbing onto it and capitalising on it. So I thought we might get into that a bit and, and have a bit of a chat about that. How does that sound? Yeah, perfect. Alrighty, so let's just uh, let's just start at the start. What a, what kind of frame of mind do you need to be in to be open to opportunities, to be able to recognise opportunities? Yeah, look, uh, be positive, be very open. Um, like literally, listen to people. Like listen to everyone. Um, don't you never know where that next little nugget of wisdom is going to come from. Um, I've been lucky enough, like I said earlier. Uh, that I got uh, to spend a lot of time with Jared and Lauren from Beauty and the Beard Eats and Events and um, they always just, to be honest with you, Jared's always just was pushing me to, you know, you need to do this for yourself, you need to have a go at this, come have a look at this line, come have a look at this, oh, here's another opportunity for you. And that sort of put me into that positive frame of mind where um, I started looking for things um, when things were down. It's like, oh, this, this place used to do it and that place used to do it. And you go and talk to this, but oh, no, we don't do it anymore. Oh, maybe we should. And it's like, do you want to give it a go? You know, let's try and create something. You know, what if we turn up here on Friday and nothing sells? That's my problem, not yours, mm. but I just need the space. Let me try and attract people to your business sort of thing. Um, Jamie from, uh, uh, Jamie Day from Bare Knuckles Barbecue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. He does an amazing yep. job of that. You know, like he draws people in uh, to a hobby shop to come and buy his, and he just goes there every Thursday and he's turned it from, you know, what could have been a, a nothing uh, opportunity into a, mon a little money-making venture, you know. Nice, where yeah, yeah. yeah. And so those sort of guys, you know, within the industry, particularly uh, those that are, uh, have done it before you, if they're kind enough to share their wisdom with you, sit and listen. Like, take it in. Go and, go and spend half an hour with them, you know. Those guys, they're not in it to keep all their wisdom and their everything else to themselves. They want to help. Most people do. So, yeah, listen, I suppose that's probably tip number one. Cool, cool. So what's what's coming through there is the importance of, of having a mentor. So did you did you seek these mentors out? Did they present themselves? Or is this, again... This, this was an opportunity that presented itself and you, and you found it. And also, what do you look for in a, in a mentor? Um, so, yeah, look, I suppose Jamie uh, I met uh, via the business because we were both doing pop-ups and uh, he'd come up to the Sunshine Coast and um, I'd 
go to see what he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, like I said, very open. So um, we sort of, you know, he offered me some bits and pieces and um, so I took that. But with Jared, it was literally, he phoned me up one day um, and said, uh, do you want to do a master class with me? I was like, oh, cool. I was like, <laughs> I was like um, I'm not sure who you are, to be honest. And, <laughs> and so, so you didn't know who he was and he approached you to join his master so, class? Yeah, like literally it just came along uh, and Matt from uh, Mary Valley Hogs uh, was the other person that was with this and it was because he wanted to present something within a Weber for a Weber class and obviously uh, back in those days um, there was probably up here no one more qualified than what I was. I was going to say was. you would have been the Weber guy up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So <laughs> uh, And so, yeah, look, I said, yeah, okay, look, I'd never done a master class before. I said, but, you know, let's go and sit down and talk through your idea. And, you know, he put it all forward and then, you know, you, you start to build that little networking um, uh, tool, I suppose, where you start getting open to those ideas. You listen to people, you see what they do, um, you know, look for the opportunities within that. And that was, you know, so we did three and then we did four master class and we start going, oh, he goes, oh, yeah, I've got a little bit of overflow. Do you want to do it? And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Look, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get back into catering. That sounds tough. Oh, okay, catering overflow. Right. I, I thought you meant master class overflow. No, it's like, just catering damn. overflow. So, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, but it's, uh, it was just sort of that, yeah, look, I'll get back into catering. That, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what am I getting myself into? You know, <laughs> so load the jambo up on the trailer and, you know, this thing was 450 kilos and I'd drag it from the backyard to the front yard and, you know, you wanted a quick pack up, it'd be two and a half hours. And I was like, God, what have I done? What have I got myself into? And then, you know, I suppose when you're looking for a mentor, look for someone who's really positive. Look for someone who's within the same industry that you are in um, and someone whose business... Um, seems to be flourishing, you know. There's a reason their business is flourishing is because what they're doing is actually working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, that's that's an important point. You really do need to do your research on that as well because you said seems to be working. And yeah. there's a whole lot of magic that can be done on social media that seems to be working. Yeah, look, so. and, you know, go and do a couple of days with people if they yeah, allow yeah. you to do it. Yep. Um, that's always a good insight as to... See what they like to work look, with, yeah. If you're not sure whether that's what you'd like to do, and you go and say to someone, hey, could I come and do a couple of days with you? Um, if the answer's no, then go and try and find someone else. If the answer's yes, it may give you a new career path. It may also turn around and go, you know what? That's gonna be way too hard for me and I'm glad I didn't quit my job to go and do this first. That actually reminds me of when my wife and I were thinking about having a baby and my sister was like, take mine for the night. So, <laughs> bit of a bit of an eye opener that one. Yeah, and you still had one. We did, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, he's he's almost nine now, if you can believe wow, that. That's he, crazy. He's going to start working the cameras for me soon. <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But let's let's loop back again. So, um, a big part is the people that you surround yourself with. So, they say that the seven people that you spend the most amount of time with are the people that are going to mould you. So, who who do you think are the are the seven people that you've spent the most time with? In, uh, in the barbecue circle that have sort of led to the development and growth of Rusty's Food and Barbecue? Oh, gee, well, um, obviously my team and my teammates, although... Um, well, the, well, there's four or five, so two more. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah look, literally, I suppose uh, my wife performs a big part to allow me to do what I needed to do, and um, you don't get to... 45 Webers without somebody noticing somewhere along the lines. I'll give you a tip on that. Buy the same black cover from Bunnings to stick on every Weber that you get and I promise you within no time they forget how many was there because they can't keep counting the same black covers. <laughs> Top tip. It's like jungle green camouflage for barbecues. As, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you can sneak another one in there as long as it doesn't block the doorway. You'll get away with that. That's awesome. <laughs> Top tips right there, folks. Top tips. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so my, my, my wife, uh, Rod, Ribnik, um, absolutely, to be perfectly honest, uh, has been there at every step along the way. Talk about a positive guy too. Like, yeah, wow. and, and pushed me and said, you know, when I went to do my first 
catering gig as Rusty's. Um, he said, mate, I'll be there, and he was, and uh, we went and did a, a catering, another catering gig for Jared, funny enough, um, all the way out of Kingaroy. Uh, in a field, and we did. We took the lacacha china out, and nice. Um, so we did a whole hog in that, and we did a whole lamb in the his radar. Um, so he's got a thirty inch radar, oh, and we right. did a whole lamb in that, along with veggies and all this. It was a wedding, um, and he just said, "Mate, I'll just come along to do it with you." <laughs> and so it just takes all the pressure off when you've got someone like him around, and you talk about that positive energy, man. It just rubs off. It really does. Um, and then, look, I think it'd be splitting the hairs to be picking people outside. <laughs> Obviously, Jared uh, and Lauren, both of them from Beauty and the Beard, um, they've been instrumental in where I am to get here. Um, Jared's just about to open his own place up in Gympie, funny oh, enough. Oh, nice. So, yeah, again, same same deal going from uh, pop-up to bricks and mortar. Yep, yep. Um, so, yeah, they've got a bunker up there in Gympie and it's looked fantastic. Like, that's going to so be the next... So have you brought in uh, him in here for a couple of nights and yeah, let so, him have a bit yeah, of work so through so here? And um, he literally... Uh, the first Wednesday we were open, he said, mate, I'll come down um, and just run a fresh eye over the place. It's like, man, we've only been open for two days. How much family <laughs> fresh eyes do I need? But it was great because... They're all fresh eyes yeah, at this and it's stage. just, you know, little mistakes that you can make with storing stuff in in kitchens can make an enormous amount of difference. And 99% of stuff was right, and he's just, like, picked up one thing and stuck it down, and he goes... Now that's okay. Yeah. And it's just little things because you, you, you're so busy and you're just trying to put everything everywhere and he just wanted to come down and, again, help out. Um, you know, you spoke of Julian earlier. Julian came down and did a day with me because we talk about that mentoring role and all that. He wanted to find out what my side of life is like. So, you know, I was more than happy to have him come in and um, just help out for the day. The guy's just fantastic. So... Um, Enthusiasm, I think, is the is the best yeah. word for Julian. He's so enthusiastic in everything he does. And look, completely and utterly has Queensland and Australian barbecue at heart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, look, literally, I reckon if you cut him open, there'd be, be, you know, barbecue sauce running out of those veins. <laughs> That's, that's a nice image, isn't it? <laughs> so, sorry, Julian. <laughs> We're not going to check and see. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know it's probably sort of too too early to uh, to sort of put you on the spot, but what what future opportunities have you sort of got in the in the sights for uh, for Rusty's Food and Barbecue? Yeah. So as we are at the moment, uh, we're bistro eleven till three, uh, Tuesday to Sunday, and then we do barbecue barbecue on uh, Friday nights, um, like tonight. Yep. Um, we're going to now replicate what we do on Friday night into Sunday lunch. Oh, nice. So, uh, completely different crowd. So, the crowd that likes to come out uh, of a Friday night generally wouldn't go back to the same place to do Sunday lunch. No. There's a lot of people, particularly with families and that sort of stuff, which is what we would have done, mm -hmm. um, go to Sunday lunch somewhere. Yep. Um, you know, so we thought we'd, we we got asked for a few requests. A few requests came through, and so as of the 13th of this month, September, um, we'll be doing that from uh, from Sunday lunch, and then mm. uh, we'll look at extending into Thursday dinner as well, um, just for the fact that with COVID numbers at the moment, we are allowed to have 96 in here because we we are. A club, we're quite a substantial venue essentially yeah, yeah. with upstairs, yep. downstairs, but um, we try to keep those numbers around that sort of 70, mm. 75 Just in bookings. Give and that then, buffer, yeah. yeah, because look, we're a club, we still have members' draws, we still have people that are allowed to come into the bar. Yeah. It's not all just about. Uh, it's, it's not just all about my kitchen and, not yet. and Rusty's Food and Barbecue. <laughs> Although we form a massive part of it, <laughs> yeah, it's not all about yeah, it. Yeah. So, And that's fine because, you know, people create atmosphere. So um, without those people that drink at that bar, uh, the members here that do that until six o'clock and as people are coming in they start to filter themselves out and that's just because they're going home to their families yeah, but yeah. the place has atmosphere as opposed to walking in you know and there's you know there, there's there's crickets because yeah you're the first there and you're like oh should we whisper to each other Jeff? Yeah. you know so 
um, it works. There's always a vibe. There's always a buzz. There's always yeah. something going on. Yeah. 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 Look, and we're not the busiest place through the week. I'm, you know, so we're going to try and build some of those quiet days. Um, so for us, there's loads of uh, things that we can do to build our business um, without becoming too big. Mm. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you get too big and um, then the service levels are naturally going to fall away because you can't service everyone who comes through the door. No. no. So we're, we're just trying to do things a little bit slowly through this period yep. and then we'll see where that leads to. So whenever COVID breaks and they allow us to put more people here, yep. we've already got the seats, we've already got the space, we've yep. already got a plan with more staff, both our my staff and the club staff mm -hmm. to be able to you know, basically run straight away. So Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're basically trying to make sure that, that your growth matches the expectations growth. Yes. The growth in expectations. That's a better way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, look, the way barbecue works is always you go up and you order from a counter and you go away because you want people to come and see your wares and all that sort of stuff. And it, it works. It, it does, works. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, table service doesn't work because people don't understand what they're seeing and... Um, you'll take them something and it'll be something completely different to what they've ordered because mm. they had a different expectation. Yeah, well, just talking about expectations, we're also not a tipping culture here. No. So we're not used to table service. We're not used to people bringing, our, bringing us our meals and we leave $10 on the table for them. We're not, yeah. we're not used to that. No. And um, I, I did spot like a few really nice key features that, that, that you do have here that just scream classic barbecue joint. You've got, you've got your, your slicing happening right behind the big glass cabinet where yep. everyone's lined up. I noticed there were sheets of butcher's paper across all the tables. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're really bringing together a whole lot of the traditional um, barbecue joint atmosphere and, uh, and accoutrement. Yeah, so that's that's all part of what we wanted to do here too, you know, um, was to literally bring uh, barbecue properly to the Sunshine Coast because there's no one who really does what we do here. So we're really unique in the scene um, and to be so far off the beaten track in this little golf club, you know, but have a look, the the wooden roof, the, the, the board, you know, if you were to replace those... Uh, those membership boards or the um, honour boards with, you know, more barbecue paraphernalia, you wouldn't have found a better joint to walk into to do barbecue, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep. Uh, and as far as the slicing and everything goes, look, it, it's all part of the theatre of what we do, mm. you know. People love pop-ups because you're slicing in front of them and, yeah, yeah. you know, just because it's not their slice of brisket, when they're coming through, people are like oh, they gonna... still get excited. Yeah, 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 they do. It's like oh, I was going to get I was going to get some fried chicken, but now I want brisket. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, look, it's, it's either way. But um, we're also limited uh, just quickly by uh, how much room we have in the kitchen because we're yeah we are landlocked essentially. Mm. It can't get any bigger. Uh, can't get any smaller, that's always a bonus, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it can't get any bigger. So um, we can add little bits of extra equipment in there to make our lives easier and to make stuff come, or to get our food out quicker. Yep. Um, but we just, you always need to be mindful of how many numbers you can do. I mean, nobody continually grows, you know, forever, essentially. So, you know, you go to that same Italian restaurant and, there's, you know, they still only have 60 seats, they still only filling them once a day. Um, that's probably, I'd like to get to two sittings. I think I can do that on Sunday. I can't do it on Friday night because um, I want people to sit and enjoy themselves. Yeah, yeah. Have a drink, be completely relaxed going into the weekend with a belly full of food. Mm. And I don't think that that gets any better for a Friday night, not yeah, being yeah. pushed out of your seat so someone else can sit in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. And you've got a whole lot of other things here that sort of really tie Aussie culture together. You're in a golf club. We're a sporting country. There's footy on the TV right over there behind us right now. Yeah. As you said, you've got all the all the honour boards of all the different sports that have been going on through here. Yeah. And I, I just want to tie that back to something that you said about um, Sundays. So I know that uh, over in Texas when I was over there, Sunday service at a barbecue joint was really important because people would go to church and then come to the barbecue joint for lunch on the way home. Now, for a lot of Australians, um, sport is church. Yep. I realise I'm yep. being sacrilegious <laughs> saying that. I'm just waiting for the lightning. Yeah. But, um, you know, 
we are that passionate about sport. So are you planning on, you know, you're, you're in a sporting venue, people are going to be going out doing sports on Sundays and coming back through, you know, like you, you're going to grab the local cricket team coming back through in the summer and the footy teams in the winter? Yeah, so um, obviously uh, sponsorship is part of that. So um, we sponsor some stuff here at the club. Ah, OK. Um, uh, but I'd like to get into some local sporting teams and just see where we can help out. Yep. Um, we're not making squillions of dollars here, but um, being part of a community club you need to be community minded exactly yeah, um yeah. and so look we're probably going to get the door beat down now but um we're happy to look at anything that comes through so you know sunshine coast barbecue festival which is now happening it's my backyard like i said we're literally the only uh, low and slow barbecue joint here uh it would not only would it be a missed opportunity from a business to not do it, but it's a great opportunity for me mm. to be able to give back to my barbecue family mm. yeah, that yeah. helped me get to where I am now because without competing and without all those people that have helped and uh, encouraged along the way, none of this exists. So Yeah, yeah, um, yeah for yeah, sure. Look, for a small outlay for us makes a massive uh, impact for... On the wider community, yeah. yeah, yeah, so good, man, and and to come to it from a from an attitude of service and a and a point of and coming from a from a mindfulness of service, you know, how how can I serve the community? How can I serve these sports teams? You will find that reciprocate through your business later on. So yeah, that's a that that's a great angle to be to be coming at that from. Well, look, man, that's probably a good point to start uh, wrapping up this conversation. So I'm going to turn the turn the uh, well. It's not my studio, it's your studio tonight. I'm going to turn your studio over to you, give some shout-outs to whoever you want to um, say thank you to and tell everybody where they can track you down on the social media. Yeah, right. Um, so, look, uh, thank yous. Um, if I'll just quickly skip in a little bit of Charcoal Project stuff here. Um, Rod Duggan, uh, Minister of Smoke, who provides all our smoking wood. So good, yeah. Yeah, both in competition and here at the restaurant. Um, yeah, look... Uh, Morgan um, from Wild Smoke, oh, Wild yeah. Smoke Rubs, yeah. uh, who supported us from day one. Um, and then, yeah, look, the boys from Butcher's Axe, they look after us, Stag and Co. So Scott Both, um, yep. all those guys, um, literally I could go on and on and on. Uh, you know, I think I've already mentioned Jared and Lauren from <laughs> yeah, Beauty yeah. and the Beard. Just, just, just once or twice. Yeah, yeah. look, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, like I said, look... Um, I could literally mention hundreds of people. Abel from Clean Heat, who's trying to get um, his product over here. My butcher, Ben from Bud's Butchers, uh, here in Coolum as well. Um, Brad from Next Level Personalising. Um, also, Awesome oh, Ugly Barbecue. From the, from the surfboard. He did yeah, the yeah. surfboard. He does our hats. He does our logos. Um, he takes my challenges when I go, you know, I need to go, I want to do something a little bit different. He's like, oh God, here we go. But he always, he always takes it on board. He sees it as an opportunity Absolutely. and he grabs it. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, and obviously the club here, um, Mount Coulomb Golf Club, um, for, you know, literally giving us the opportunity to, uh, to be Rusty's Food and Barbecue in bricks and mortar. So um, yeah, massive shout out to those guys too. Um, and yeah, so uh, where can you find us, I suppose? Yes, That's that the was next the next part, part yep. Um, so, yeah, look, Rusty's Food and Barbecue uh, or rustysfood.com.au, I think. I don't really Google myself very often. We'll, we'll clarify that in yep. the show notes. That'll be <laughs> fine, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, like literally social media, Rusty's Food and Barbecue on Instagram, Rusty's Food BBQ. Um, yeah, if you can't find us there, um, look harder. Yeah, fair enough, man. Well, look, thank you so much for your time tonight. I, I realise that you, you know, you need to leave here now and go get to this competition. So I, I appreciate you taking time out of the night to talk to me. And thanks for that food, man. That was fantastic. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thanks for having me here, having you here. I suppose. So, yeah. mate, it's been fantastic. Alrighty, so there you have it, folks. That is Rusty from Rusty's Food and Barbecue here at Mount Coolum Golf Club. If you are lucky enough to be in Queensland. Take a drive, sp uh, spend some money supporting local, come check him out. Top guy, you know him almost as well as I do now. And uh, yeah, 
come and support him and have a really good night out. It is fantastic food. So that is about all the time that we do have for today. If you have been watching this video on Facebook, give us a like and a share. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you get a notification every time we upload a new video. If you're watching on IGTV, that's the video format on Instagram, if you're not familiar, give us a little heart. Those things are so cute and hit the follow button. And if you are listening on a podcast app to the audio version, make sure you check out if you can give us a rating and review, particularly if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. A five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts goes a mile for us. So thank you very much for your time and that's all we have for tonight. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>